morning and welcome to Morning Matters. This morning we are in downtown Belize City. I am on the further, I would say the south side of Albert Street, um, closer to Wesley College area in case you're wondering. Um, that's for the ones that, you know, know where Wesley College there. If you don't know, it's way down Albert Street. We are at a Christian bookstore. I can't get the name right, but I'm sure that the people in here will tell me what the name is. It's my first time stopping in here. You can't blame me. You know, a person I thought, this is a good place to stop. Well, I stopped in here and into an old friend. My guest this morning uh, is Danit Panton Fuller. Danit, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Rhonda. I'm good. Thank you. You look good, girl. Thank you. So <laughs> do you. <laughs> Tell us a little bit uh, about yourself, you know, where you're from or anything that you'd like to share with us that you want people to know about yourself. Okay, well, I was born in Belize and I grew up here my, all my life. I moved away in 2003 and I've lived in the United States. For, uh, for the past 13 years and recently I have come back home. I have made several trips back home and my mission for coming back home is to help to empower women to live a more fulfilled life uh, through Jesus Christ. All right, well that's interesting. Um, what made you make such a move? Well having been personally experiencing the streets of Belize as a young girl and uh, believing with all my heart that God himself rescued me from just a horrible demise. I felt that it was the least I can do is to come back and to try to help other young women um, find a better way of living. I have many questions. Um, mm -hmm. But do you mind when you say some of those demise, uh, was it that you were, you know, when people say that some of them were into drugs, some of them were into just running the streets, some of them were just lost souls, some of them were just unaware that there was a greater power than themselves. Do you mind sharing a little bit about what some of the, some of the things that could have happened to you or where you were at that point in time? Well, I never, thank God, I never uh, used drugs, but alcohol was one of my big issues. I drank a lot. Um, I was partying, I was clubbing, and I was very promiscuous. Um, and there was no care or shame, I would say, in what I was doing. There was nobody that was telling me that there was a different way. And you know, sometimes we want to say, well, nobody has to tell you. It's like, you know what's right from wrong. But what I have learned that I was in such a dark place that I didn't know even if it was right or wrong, I didn't know how to get myself out of where I was in. Do you think that if somebody had come to you and said, girl, stop that, that's no good, you know you're doing the wrong thing, do you think you'd have been in a place where you said, sure, and tomorrow you just grab your Bible and start reading? Or do you think that you had to have gone through the things that you went through to bring you to the place that you are today? I think that one thing that we don't realize is that there is spiritual warfare going on. And this is like the topic that nobody wants to talk about. People expect to tell you, you got to do the right thing, and then they expect you to do it, but they don't know that behind the scenes, there's a greater force working against you. And there are two kingdoms, the kingdom of light, which serves God, and the kingdom of darkness, which is Satan and his workers. What was your changing point? My changing point was having two daughters from two different men, one of which was a married man, and my other daughter I wasn't married to and crying out to God. Like people saw me, they saw what I wore, they saw me on the streets, they saw me at the clubs, and people thought they knew who I was. But they didn't know that inside I was saying, I want to change my life. I don't want to live this way. But nobody could tell me how to do it. So God himself had to rescue me. What made you go to God? Because God is always an option, but a lot of people don't. God, I don't believe, imposes himself. You have to choose God, I believe. You have to right. actively seek and choose God. What made you say, you know what, you know what, Danet, I have to do better. I will go to God. What was the one thing that made you make that decision? Because I would imagine that there must be something that made you say, you know what, today, all this drinking or all this, whatever it is that you were doing has to stop. Also, I would imagine that when you started, when you made that decision, it wasn't an overnight process. So right. first tell me what was the turning point? Well, I, what was the beginning and what I like to call my summit was that I believe as a little child, God himself drew me to him and planted a seed inside of me. And one of the things that my mom did was she made sure that we went to church. 
And I believe just that act by itself allowed me to be exposed to the things of God. And even though as I grew up, there came a point where I wasn't, my mom didn't make me go and I didn't go to church anymore, but I believe a seed was planted. So, so how did you neglect the seed for so long and what brought you to the point where you say, you know what, I have to go back to my first teaching? Because God is love, right? And his love does for us what we cannot do for ourselves, right? So when you put a seed in the ground and you expect a fruit to come from that seed, you put it in, you dig a hole, you put it in the ground, you cover it with dirt and you water it. You don't sit there every day and watch the seed grow. But the rain comes and waters it and the sun comes and gives it light. And one day you go to that spot and there's a leaf. And the leaf grows into a tree and the tree produces a fruit. So as a child, a seed was planted in me. It got some watering and some nurturing, but God himself raised me up. And then one day I became a leaf. And then he sent people, he sent people into my life that would bombard me with his word, that would read to me and pray for me. And I'm telling you, I, there were days when I know people were there praying for me and I know they were reading the Bible, but I was in such a dark place that I could not tell you one scripture or word that they read to me. But one day, somebody came to me and they said, you have to surrender to me completely. And I thought that person was talking to me as a human being. It would have been years later that I realized that God was saying to me, you have to give me all of you. And that day I made the commitment with my mouth, really saying, okay, God, I will do it. I will surrender. Not knowing that that was the beginning of the rest of my life. What has the walk been like? Or what is the walk like? Because I would imagine you're still going through the walk. The walk is simply amazing, extremely dramatic, and totally possible with God. I can't imagine the walk being easy because in no matter how strong your faith is, there is always the pressure of society, mm -hmm. there is the pressure of your friends, there's the pressure of your family. There's just natural human pressure that is that bombards you every day. Like mm -hmm. and you don't want to while you want to do your work, you don't want to seem like a misfit. Mm -hmm. because you want to you have to fit in to do your work because mm -hmm. you have to be able to get along and speak with people and communicate to do your work so when I say how difficult is the job I would like for you to tell me a little bit about maybe your your life with with your family or with your husband or just as because those are people that I would imagine that either had to get on the boat with you or they you had to drag them along or they were or they were or they on the boat on. before you know, so you have to, not that you have to, but I would like for you to explain a little bit about that because when somebody decides to make a change, whatever change in their life, like let's say I decide that today I, in my home we will no longer eat meat. Mm -hmm. My daughter will not eat meat, my husband will not eat meat because I don't believe that meat is good for us, let's say. Mm -hmm. And so now when my daughter comes home and my husband comes home, they expect stewed chicken because that's what we like eat. Mm -hmm. And then there's no stewed chicken. So I will have a fight with them. Mm -hmm. So I either have to wean them off of the stewed chicken or I have to cut it out with, the, with running the risk that they want to eat stewed chicken anyway in this house and mm -hmm. I want to be the outcast. Right. How do you manage that? Well, the one thing that I learned um, was that walking with God was a personal choice. And it was something that I had to make up in my mind that I was going to do because I needed it. I couldn't do it because my kids needed it or my husband needed it or my family needed it. I realized that I needed God and I needed him for myself. As I started walking, I also realized that there were some things and people that would have to just be cut off. And decisions, hard decisions were, have, were, were made, hard decisions. Like, no, I'm not going there anymore. I'm not doing that anymore. But with God, what would have been hard to the average person became kind of easy to the extent that I packed up and I left Belize. I left my job. I left my home. I left my family. And I, I went somewhere new. Well, you didn't leave your family. You went with your family. Well, my new then, family. Because right. that was your husband and your children. That right. was your family. Um, and that was a necessity. I believe that anybody that gets married and if they make a commitment to their husband or their wife or whatever the case is, and you know, it is feasible, then mm -hmm. you have to do what it is for the betterment of your family. Well, now that we've gotten some of the basics out of the way, now we know who done it is to a great degree. You have children, you spoke about two daughters. I have five children, well, three now, daughters and two sons. And just to go back a little bit, but how, 
has your decision to embrace this journey affected your family on a whole? Well, initially it was difficult for the two older girls because we were always together and up to about age eight or nine, they knew the mommy that they knew that was drinking and partying and doing all of that. And somewhere along the road, mommy changed. So they sat kind of looking at this transition and I didn't realize until now that they're older that, um, that it was the most important decision that I ever made. And now they look back and they say, Mommy, we remember when. And then they can say, Mommy, look at what God has done in your life. And I think from anything that I could possibly give them in this world, the greatest thing that I could give them is for them to see me have a, a functional relationship with Jesus Christ. And so in seeing that, I believe that they, they too will have that relationship that I believe is absolutely necessary for the rest of their lives. All right, now we know that your position, we're going to jump into some morning matters. This is Morning Matters. You can send your text to us at the number on the screen. You can also email your matters to us at morningmatters at gmail.com. I ask you to like us on Facebook. The page is called Morning Matters Belize. All right, um, before we jump into um, to a matter, maybe what I would like to discuss with you is I know that in this establishment you guys do preaching for lack of a better term and you empower people and that kind of stuff. Um, I think, tell us a little bit about what gets done here. Well, this establishment is called Kingdom Living Book Teak. And um, I partner here with Miss Natalie Robinson and Miss Sharon Samuels. And what we do is we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. Um, people come in here. We do sell uh, Christian materials, books and gifts and um, stuff like that. It's also a cafe. We sell coffee and different you know, sweets and stuff like that. We're trying to make it a one-stop shop kind of thing where you get to feed your, your natural man and you get to feed your spirit man. And we pray for you if you need prayers and we witness about the goodness of Jesus Christ to you. Is this a place, because when people walk in, they might say, oh, you know, the sun, this is so nice, lady, come sit down and drink tea. It's a place for everybody. This is a place for absolutely everybody. We have young people coming in here. They come in and they don't want to leave. They sit around, they laugh, they joke. We pray with them, we talk to them. They share their concerns. They laugh, they cry. We have older people coming here. We have men coming here, women, young girls. This place is for everybody. All right, this place is for everybody, kind of like home morning matters is for everybody. So we bring this place to you in the comfort of your home. If you want to come out and explore this place, it's uh, 81. 81 Albert Street uh, in Belize City. You know, sometimes you, in your life, you feel that you don't know what you want, but you want a change. And when you're looking for a change, put yourself in a positive place. And this is a nice positive place to come. The colors are bright, and now we say, when you feel so good, put on some bright colors and walk into a bright room. It's true. It really, really changes everything about you. All right, I hear that. Good morning. I had a friend, and I left, and I felt betrayed by her. We used to do everything together. I was happy for her when she was getting married. I was so excited for my friend. But then I was not invited, and I felt so bad. Do I feel... How do I feel... How, so bad, how do I tell my friend how I feel without making her feel bad? Well, so you were really good friends. Yes. And she got married. And she didn't invite you. Well, did she invite half of Belize and just didn't invite you? Or was it just a small wedding? I think that if somebody that is your friend did something to offend you, it is your duty to go to them and say, you know, Danette, you offended me, right? Okay. And then when you go to Danette and you tell Danette how she offended you, it is then Danette's responsibility to respond to you honestly, right? Right. So then that will give Danette, and I'm using you as an example, mm -hmm. the opportunity to say, well, you know, Rhonda, um, I did get married. I might have mentioned it to you, I might not have mentioned it to you. Obviously she hurt because she was happy. Um, but you do understand that X, Y, and Z. I say in any friendship, communication is important. It's, it's you could sit home and be green with anger 
or you could approach the person and give them the opportunity to open up the, the, the communication. You have to understand that the person on the outside and the person on the inside see the same story differently, differently. because they're seeing two different sides of the same coin. And in any friendship, like a relationship, there has to be the opportunity for both parties to express themselves right. and move on. That's it. I believe in the power of talk. Mm -hmm. um, coincidentally, I just got married a little while ago. It very well could be me. It could be somebody else. Thank you for um, inviting me. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> but um, I say that to say because some people felt the same way about my getting, me getting married. And I have to say that I cannot invite everybody. I mm -hmm. invited some people that did not take, take the invitation for what it was. Mm -hmm. But also, I didn't invite a lot of people because it was really and truly, it was far. It was right. in Placencia. And, it, and I, I only could have hosted X amount of people. I have a friend that's getting married in July. He only invited 38 people. Mm -hmm. If you make it to the 38, you're good. But most people have a lot of family. My husband has a lot of family. Right. Right. So it was in, we basically just invited blood relatives. Right. Right. That's just how and it is. with this young lady, you know, maybe you need to evaluate uh, your friendship with this person because maybe in her mind, like they were the best friends ever, and maybe the person didn't quite view it like that. So you want to be clear with, and like you said, communication. Be clear with a person Talk to, to understand where where you stand in their lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. And don't let one event affect the history that you built with somebody. Right. Because sometimes people offend you inadvertently, mm -hmm. you know, intend to offend you. I have a boyfriend, we've been together for a year now, but for the past months he's been coming home with vamps all over his body. He said, and he said he did them when I, no, I did not, I did not, what should I do, I guess. He Clearly said that is he not her boyfriend. When I knew, I guess, mm -hmm. but I did not. Oh, he's saying it's you that did them. And she eh, knows. Eh. <laughs> Clearly that is not your boyfriend. This boy I got <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, well, if I were you, my dear, mm -hmm. I would make it my practice not to put no vamp on this man because it's either you vamping him and your memory bad or he getting it out there and he giving you like them the bad day. Caribbean bone. Mm -hmm. Me, my memory bad. I have to claim that. My memory is not the best memory. Especially if you're under the influence. No, 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 my memory bad, but I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> if I mark my husband today, you by the remember? morning when we did show and stuff, I won't notice. Mm -hmm. So I can be one little reminder that you know what? My husband's going out today with a mark for the back or a or wherever it is. Mm -hmm. If I have difficulty to remember that, I'll make it my business. Not for mark my husband. Because <laughs> when you come home, I want to make sure you're clean. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, there's only so much foolishness you could tolerate, only so much foolishness you could buy. The question is, do you want to continue to live this life? Mm -hmm. I would say, like somebody I know would say, the truth is before you. You can decide That's right. to do what, what, it, want. With it, what you want. This one says, I live in a 2080 relationship. We both have great jobs, but I deal with the majority of our financial obligations. So I leave all house chores to her. Because of that, she is all up in my face, and still I am called ungrateful. How do I deal with this? 2080 relationship. Not 80, 20, 20, 80. He bringing the 80 and she bringing the 20. <laughs> in his life. And he does the work? He go outside and bring all the money, and because of that, he leaves all the housework to her. Mm -hmm. I think that's fair. Oh, yeah. I think if that's she's really at home. Fair. Is she... No, 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 no. They're, they're, sorry. They're not both at home. He says, we both have great jobs. Okay. But he, out of his money, he take care of all the financial um, obligations. Mm -hmm. That is what he's saying. Both mm -hmm. of them work two good jobs. Okay. But he is the one that pays all the bills and run everything in the house. Because that he decided, you know what? The housework that you could do it how you want. And she's still really not. She not smart. <laughs> No, I don't mean to sound crazy, but if I had a husband that both of us make good money and he paying all the bills, I take in that one fifty and I call him in marriage. <laughs> no, That's it's right. the truth. Because and if I don't to want you. to do it, it needs to be done. And right. I take in that one fifty out of my pocket. Me happy, my husband happy, and all the people happy. That's right. And, and the house clean. clean. So you don't have to deal with that. Maybe you have to suggest to her that she um, 
pay somebody to clean the house. She, she can't afford it. She can afford it, and if she don't want to do it physically, then she has to do it. I believe that life is fair. Mm -hmm. If you have a husband paying all the bills, the least you can do is keep the clean house clean. Clean your house, absolutely. If you don't want to do it physically, pay that pay $50 somebody. or $150 or whatever the case is, but pay to do it. Mm -hmm. It needs to be done. Absolutely. He living up to his side of, side of the bargain, you, you need live to up live to up yours. to your side of the bargain. I bargain. agree. You know, a lot of time when people um, get married, they feel that man is boss. Mm -hmm. And woman is secondary. What's your thought on that? No. I believe that women and men are supposed to help each other. I don't believe in a boss or secondary. I believe in communication. Talk to each other and do what needs to be done in your home so that we could all function properly. I don't know a lot about the Bible. Mm -hmm. I would be the first one to admit that. Right. right. Um, but I think somewhere in there it says that uh, the man is the head. No, right. God is the head. The man is next, and then the wife, and then the children, or something in that. First order. Corinthians eleven three. Christ is the head of the man. The man is the head of the woman, and God is the head of man of Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What happened when you get a man who the not the head, even though he got the head position? That that was real reality. Right. How you deal with that? Well, first of all, you have to be in your position as the woman who has a relationship with Christ. Because remember, this all comes from God, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we might not want to admit this, and the men, it might sound really bad, but in the beginning, God created man, and he said, he looked at man, and man didn't, man didn't have a partner, and he said, it is not good for man to be alone, and I will create him a helper comparable to himself. So women were put in man's life to do what? To assist. Exactly. Hold, hold, on. Crazy man. hold on. If he, uh, if he had it all together, you know me, I need the woman. Right? Yes. So God equipped the woman with a certain amount of power necessary to help the man. Right? We're talking Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Imagine the magnitude of power Eve had. While Adam walked with God every day and spoke to God, God personally spoke to Adam. But Eve was able to convince him to go against everything that God said mm -hmm. and eat that fruit. That has to be some crazy power you have. Mm -hmm. Right? God didn't take away that power from us as women. And he didn't make man any brighter. He still, <laughs> the, 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 the original plan remained the same. It is not good for man to be alone, and I will create him a helper comparable to himself. Million, thousands of years later, we as women are still called to help our men. Watch this. The world teaches that we help our men. Get out there, get your 20%, work, have your job, and bring in your bacon into the house, right? How does it work in the spirit realm? How does God expect us to help our men? by getting on our knees and praying for them. Because before you see anything manifested in the natural, it is first done in the spirit realm. So we are called to be pray, prayer warriors for our husbands. But that's a hard pill to swallow, right? And people want to focus on the, I'm the man, you're the woman, head, whatever. No, we are not less than, but we are powerful because that's what God gave us. And if we learn where to channel our power and how to use the power that God gave us, then we'll see changes with our man that God, only God himself can make. How do I know? Ask me how I know. I figure you do it yourself. There you go. There you go. Been there and done that. On that note, we're going to take a break and be back. Absolutely. New Buildings Limited is the company of choice when it comes to design, fabricating, and erection of wide-span metal buildings in Belize. At New Buildings, we have a team of well-trained professionals that can produce the most innovative and durable metal structures. Be it domestic or industrial buildings, we can get it done for you. We have put together some of the most outstanding metal structures in the country. We also do estimates and consulting. Visit new buildings in Spanish Lookout or give them a call at 631-8723 or 610-5185. New Buildings Limited, the experts when it comes to metal structures in Belize. Aeropost is now making shopping easier and much more convenient. You can now shop from the comfort of your own home and have your goods delivered to you with no additional cost in as little as seven working days. No credit card, no problem. Come on down to our office at number one Mott Street in Millie City and we will assist you with your shopping. No order too small or large for us to ship. Be it cell phone, TV, jewelry, shoes or clothing, we have exactly what you're looking for. At Aeropost, your favorite shopping spot is only one click away. Aeropost, you shop, we ship, 
we deliver. Give us a call at 223-4349 or visit us at number 1 Mott Street in Belize City. right here from uh, downtown Belize City, downtown Albert Street, we're going to call it that for today. It's 81 Albert Street. Now it's time to jump into another matter. All right, he says, morning, I need your opinion. I love this man, but he is not divorced. He and his wife have been separated. We've been together for three years. He comes to visit me and he treats me like a queen, but people still judging me. Do you think that this is love? No. How you could say that no love, Mr. Ne? Because I was there. I was in darkness and I didn't understand darkness. what darkness. It's darkness and straight from the pits of hell, if I dare say. How so? Enlighten me. Well, as a young girl too, I did the married man thing. This man, no mar he only married on paper, you know. He gone from his wife. He not with his wife. He's not married to you. No, 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 I'm just, I'm just being devil's No, advocate. he's not married to the person. He's not married to nobody. Well. He just jumping bones for free. Well, let me say this to the young lady. I pray that one day you wake up and realize that you are absolutely precious and important to God, that you have value and that you have worth and that you are good enough to have your own husband. Why? Because one day that's what happened to me. I woke up one day and I realized that as long as I kept this married man in my life, that I was never going to have a husband. And I also realized that I was good enough and I was beautiful enough to have my own husband. And I sent him packing. And also, when you start, first of all, this man needs to be divorced and he needs to make attempts or he needs to get busy at get, trying to get married to you. If he doesn't make those steps, then he can't be your man. Um, and nothing is done overnight. So I not expect for you to wake up tomorrow and say, oh, you know, Tom Jones, you have to be my husband. I suggest that today you have the conversation with him and see his response. Because the conversation, it has to start with a conversation. Well, I would be careful. Because what is his issues with his current wife? He not with her. Why not? It doesn't really matter to you. Yes, because you want to make sure that if you're getting into something, remember, he has been married before. He's about to enter a second marriage. Ask questions. Why wasn't the first marriage working? And don't bring that crap into the second marriage. So you don't want to just go into something and you don't know why he came out of the first one in the first place. True. But you also have to understand, or I would like you to understand, that marriage is not about him and her. It's about us. Sometimes, and I'm not taking up for him or her, sometimes together we are not good for each other. Doesn't mean that you, Dalet, is bad and Tom Jones is bad. It means that together it's like oil and water sometimes. It just don't mix. Mm -hmm. So that when you go on and you find yourself Mr. Brown and he go on and he find himself Mary Jane, they might make a better combination. Sometimes marriages don't work because we choose the wrong people for the wrong reason not necessarily because he is bad or she is bad that is my right. strongest opinion on that right but you also want to make sure that you're not repeating what you've done before or that person is not repeating you know what no, they've no, no, done before right Good morning, I have a baby father. He treat me good, but I don't want to have sex with him. I was with a girl and she got pregnant. Wait, 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 wait. What is this? Good morning, I have baby father. I guess she has a baby father. And he treats me good, but I don't want to have sex with him. I was with a girl and she got pregnant. Her mother makes her abort it. She left and go back to five months after she tell me she pregnant. What must I do? This is this text came from Karaku. Karaku English is not their first language, okay. so it is difficult to try and understand what he's saying. But what I, first of all, I'm not sure if it's a he or a she. she. But I think that he is saying that he is the baby father, um, and he has a girl that doesn't want to have sex with uh -huh. him, and then 
he was with the girl and she got pregnant. Mm -hmm. And the mother made her abort the child. And now after five months, she wants to get back. He doesn't know what to do. That's how I want to translate that. Right. <laughs> and make that matter. Mm -hmm. um, I think too much is happening. I think that there's a lot happening that you need to separate yourself from it. Um, an abortion is not an easy thing. It's a huge move. It is so... Um, I don't know if you it's see the life sign It's life-changing. It's life-altering. Well, I don't know if it's only in this, but there's a sign that says one dead and one wounded. Mm -hmm. um, and in this case, it could be one dead and two wounded. Mm -hmm. um, so I would not hasten myself to be with anybody. That girl needs a lot of time for herself. She needs to be separated from everything. And she needs she, healing. And she needs to heal. Um, you can be there for her as her friend, but I would not get in a relationship with her because I don't think any of you are ready. She essentially destroyed her day or whatever. I mean, even though it was her choice, her choice was to destroy something that was for you and her, and she chose to destroy it. I don't know how it affects you or how it will affect you, um, but those are things that you have to think about because then I would have the fear that if that same situation presents itself again, she might decide to make the same kind of decision. When your mother, it, it, because then it comes from a higher place than you. If your mother is condoning that, then you are condoning that. Then I would step away for a little bit. That would be how I would deal with that. Yeah, I agree. Good morning. I got your number one program I was watching two weeks ago. I would like to talk about some problems in my life. Step one, I have a relationship problem. I love this guy, but he's flirting with different women. But the problem is that my heart and mind is telling me not to say nothing. And I feel dumb at times. This is from St. Vincent. Your heart and your mind lying to you. That's right. Jeremiah 17 and 9 says that the heart is deceitful above, above all things. And you can't know it. People like to be led by their heart, but it's time for us to start leading our hearts instead of allowing our hearts to lead us. Mm -hmm. Very well. I couldn't agree with you more. I would say if you... There is something that I believe is called instinct, and your instinct is almost always correct. Mm -hmm. You know that this is not right. It's the reason you send in this matter. Right. If you thought this was peachy, you would not have sent in this right. matter. So what I would say is, leave it alone. We ha you have to realize that you are worth more than you are told Absolutely. by him or, or her or else. the people. Absolutely. Your worth is not decided by how somebody feel or treat you. Your worth is your worth. This is like having a diamond earring. And because the man on the road wants to give you a dollar for it, you think the diamond earring only value a dollar. But then you wait and you hold on to this diamond earring and then you realize that you go down, further down the road and the man give you $5 for Absolutely. this diamond earring. Nobody really giving you the real value. You have to know the value. That's the right. value might not even be monetary. It might be a great grandma give you and you can't buy Let it, it because your great, great right. grandma gone. So you have to start to value yourself yes, in so. such a way that when you step out on the road, you know your value. You know and negotiate down. You know, if you know that this phone is worth $10, nobody could come give you 5 That's for right. it. Because you know the value of this phone. That's and if right. you know the value of yourself, then nobody wants to come into your space and play the fool. Because you want to say, no, 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 there's no room in here for, this, for that kind of behavior. You got to go. That's right. All right, Miss Dave, another matter. My six-month baby pa hit me pregnant. It ended until baby come. I take him back. Regret it. It's over. No, I am depressed. I seek help. My esteem is low. What do I do? You pray and get yourself in a place with God because he's the one that created you. He absolutely, he knows your worth and your value. No person on this earth is going to make you feel good. You have to know that the God that created you, he sees you as good. You're good enough to him. And until like um, Drew's uncle would say, or he said one time to me when I said something, maybe not like that, but I said something, he says, that's easy for you to say. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that is easy for you to say because you have come out of the darkness. Um, but I think for somebody that's struggling like that, they need to first find a place to go where they can surround themselves 
with positive people, people that will enhance your, your belief <coughs> in your work. Um, when we were, and I always go back to this, I, I always say that my, my, both my parents are good, but my father, in my opinion, was a great father. He always told us how great we are. Mm -hmm. We are the greatest of the greatest. Mm -hmm. Those were his words. Even when you go to school and you're not doing so good, you're still the greatest of the greatest. So, and those are the things that stayed with us, I would mm -hmm. imagine, that makes us believe in ourselves. So for somebody that's feeling low or depressed or their esteem is challenged, they need to go to somebody or a place where somebody will say something nice to them. Because if the only person saying something to you is the person that's beating down on you, then you have a hard time to find your grace. Mm -hmm. um, so you must have a friend or your mother or your father or your uncle or your aunt or somebody that you can go to that they say, girl, you only look good today. Right. Or you don't realize, Mary Jane, you're not smart. Girl, you know, why not snap out of that? Because while it is... Ideally, if you can grab your Bible and, and find that strength, when you are on your face, you will need the help that God has sent for you. And the only way for you to access it is to seek it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's there. You need people. You need to surround yourself with, with positive people. And it might come slowly, and maybe because you're so dark right now, you can't think of one person. But by the end of the week, you have to think of one person that you can go. Even if not, call or one text. Start texting somebody that will say, not flirt with you now, say something positive mm -hmm. and meaningful to mm -hmm. you. Not gal, you're sexy, mm -hmm. but gal, you're, you're smart. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Or you're beautiful. Absolutely. Or, or something that will make you say, man, that right. really makes sense. Then, with that and your Bible, you're going to pray. Right. And for me, I had, I had co-workers. Um, and that's why I believe that it doesn't matter in the darkest place, wherever you are, I believe that God sends and surrounds you with people that can help you. And for me, I didn't go to seek a positive place, but he had co-workers in my space that would constantly be bombarding me with the things of God. And that's what we try to do here at Kingdom Living. We try to make this a place where women can come and we can give them positive um, words, you know, to help them move along. That's right, catch the bus and know where you live if you live in the city of if you live close enough, you can walk. Come here, relax yourself, lots of positive things. A lot of time people take Facebook and they read all the gossip. Mm -hmm. They have some good thoughts to come on Facebook, you know. Yeah. You could read those, Go Google. Google some positive thoughts, motivational thoughts. That way, if nobody has to tell you in this moment, you read it and you feel good. Mm -hmm. Me and my wife separated for six months now, but we still go out together. You think we will get back? Ask your wife. <laughs> You could have live it for us. What me we ask? Mm -hmm. Honey, what will you do ya? Mm -hmm. What is going? What is the purpose of this? And if you don't go in the way, make her go. So I don't waste my time. Because you don't want to have the womb open and all you do that continue to put salt. Mm -hmm. Because one day you not heal with salt. You understand? So um if we need to go out on a date, we need to have communication and figure out what to do. Right. What we need to be clear. Tell the truth. Be yeah. End. Be honest to each other and tell the truth. There has to be an end plan. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't have no plan, then we just to glide by. And if we just to glide by, then... Because if I marry to John, and I go out with John with the hope that we can get back, and John they say, he just the appease for his wife, but he the say Mary Jane, then we'd have a problem. That's right. We have and to have somebody going to end up being hurt. I have this guy we're dating. He's seven years older than me. And me. We have not done anything as yet like that, but he says he wants to marry me. How do I deal with this? Wait and let him marry you. If you didn't do it yet, don't do it until the night of. You know, if a man says he wants to marry you, give him the opportunity. If you want to marry him, give if him you the want opportunity to marry him, to marry you. Absolutely. You don't have to give yourself to that degree for somebody to, to be marry. in love with you or Absolutely. marry you. Um, if you find somebody in this day and age, I would hold on to him with my two hands That's and right. two foot. That's right. Because That's right. it is very unusual when you find a man in this society that is that not wants looking to for wait. your physical That's being right. and, is and is willing to, to marry you. I would ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Because they always say, I don't want to buy pussy in a bag either. Mm -hmm. I have to keep it real. We have to ask a lot of questions. We have to check it. That is, it's not that something is wrong with him, but his moral values are intact. Mm -hmm. um, and how you find that out? 
You don't strip his pants down, you ask questions. Mm -hmm. You have conversation with him, you see the life he lived, you see the choices that he made, because people will say anything mm -hmm. to get what they want. But once you spend time with them, you see how they communicate with their friends, with their family, how they interact with right. people, the, the kind of words they choose. That will make you get a better understanding of who this person right. is. Because how they treat other people. Exactly. So when he is with you, he says all these nice things, and baby, I don't want nothing yet. It could be that he can't do nothing. <laughs> no, I mean, that is, that is a right. very real possibility. Not to say that if he can't do nothing, you don't want to marry him, but that's information you need to know nope. before, before you make the so decision So you can make a decision, him. absolutely. Right? But I don't say try out the tool. When you go into the places there, you pick up the swimsuit, you're not allowed to put them on, you mm -mm. know. You, you know that your size it. is seven, and you see that this is a style I might like. You look among all the size seven them, and you says, I will get this one. If it fit me well or not, I will get this one because I'll put some shallow over it if you leave it to bigger, if you leave it to smaller, whatever the case is. And then the same thing to a great degree with oh, your marriage. Right. You make one informed decision based on what you look what for. You know. So stop. Stress out yourself that the man don't want nothing. The man wants. Just want, take your time. The man wants everything. That's not what the man wants. On that one, we're going to take a break and be back. <laughs>
well, you know, the man not satisfy me, or a lot of men like say, you know, the woman not satisfy me, but you know, love making is, in my opinion, it has very little to do with the physical and more to do with the mental. It starts in your mind, right? Absolutely. So, I would have to say that you have to reassess your position with your spouse um, or with yourself. With yourself, I would say. Right? So Check you yourself to, first. You need to sit down and, and, and self-examine and then have a discussion with your, with your wife and mm -hmm. say what the deal is. Maybe, maybe nobody's doing what they're supposed to do. I always use this example. People are not horses, you know, just tie them up, jump on them and jump off. That's, That's just not right. how it works. That's right. That's you know, right. we need stimulation. And and everybody needs everybody is stimulated differently. Right. What is work? What work for me might not might work not for work Jane, for or it might not work for Tom Jones. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn your partner, and that happens through trial and error. That's it right. happens through communication, and that is why I always say that a relationship that is built on sex is not a relationship That's that right. you should be in. That's right. Because we get old mm -hmm. and the sex done, mm -hmm. and 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 then and what is left? Tired. That's right. You understand? I don't want nobody playing up with me every day, all day. That's I mean, right. sometimes I just want to relax and watch TV and talk. Right, and have your company I beside me. Tea with That's you. right, absolutely. So, and I know I'll always be 25, mm -hmm. just in case you don't want to Thank you. I am, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. So I say, when you are getting into a relationship, think of all the factors. Sex being the smallest one. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I agree. In the meantime, go check up yourself. Good morning. My problem is me and my boyfriend are together for four years and counting, but we always have problems because of his baby mother. She keeps texting me and calling me, and when I tell him about it, he acts like he don't even know the number that's bothering me. So what do I do? Because I'm thinking about taking matters into my own hands. Like, what kind of, what do you mean taking your own hands? Like, delete, not like delete it the number. I hope that kind of taking into your own hands is a problem because in a word, you hustle. No. He who angers you owns you. Mm -hmm. They say like this, you know, you know when she texts you, this is what she look like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and what do you look like? <laughs> she right. happy, happy, happy right. when she telling you these things. She got you like one of the Lee Rag dolls. Pop it, absolutely. When you see Mary Jane texting, you just delete it, don't read it. Mark her in your phone as ignore. Mm -hmm. When ignore calling, where do? Ignore it. Thank you. <laughs> I have a few ignores in the phone. There you go. So when me seeing ignore calling, I don't even try to figure who this ignore mm -hmm, is. Mm -hmm. This is one of the ones that must be ignored. Try not let it go. I am male and I have female friends. We meet together, a mutual friend, and we started going out and getting to know each other. She lose her virginity a few months now. One of her male friends, but they are not together. But they still see each other to have sex. I really like her for, for her. And she knows that we never even kiss. But we share a lot. I don't know what to do. Whether to still pursue her for a relationship or just stay friends. I've been hanging out with her, with a girl, for three months now. And I have recently heard she's still seeing another guy. Physically. But really, I like her. And she is not in a relationship with him. What do I do? Mm, mm, mm. I would say you find yourself in a relationship with God and start praying. And let God do what only he can do. If that's your wife, God's going to make her your wife. If not, keep it moving. And the song like this, when you're young, and everybody will do what everybody will do. Um, but I think that one of the most beautiful relationships is friendship. It is very uncomplicated it is very simple mm -hmm. it's truthful it's peaceful make she the she you do you relax yourself keep your options open and see how it goes i wouldn't um i wouldn't pursue her mm -hmm. i would take that time to strengthen my own magnet right because if, even if she does come to you is that is that the type of person that you really want to have to be in a relationship with because you're uncertain what, you know, she may come to you for a couple months and then go to somebody else. So it seemed that both of you want different things. If right. I were her friend's friend, though, I would talk to her right. about the choices that I right. see her making. You know, Mary Jane, maybe I'll have to do this because X, Y, and Z, and just leave it at that. Right. Be her friend, but don't expect much more than that. If your boss is spiking you for no reason, what am I supposed to do? 
find a new job. <laughs> Debo. If you can't, no, it depends on the situation. Because some bosses spite you because they don't want to pay you. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at it. If you're working for 15 years or 20 years and the man trying to frustrate you, hold your peace. Grab your Bible and pray he mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. No, seriously, because anything other than that won't be to your detriment. Right. If you just start working his job and the man frustrating you, then find another job. But if you have enough invested and you have not done any wrong, mm -hmm. stick it out. Stick it out. Make him right. get tired. Make him pay your severance. Mm -hmm. I have 10 years of marriage. I have three children. My husband has cheated on me lots of times. With all that had happened, I lost my house. He has changed for one year and now he's telling me that I am cheating. No, but he is not. And I'm really stressed. And it comes to my mind that he's still doing it again. I'm from Orange Walk. You have a husband, 10 years of marriage, three children. He cheated because of that. I don't know how that allowed you to lose your house, but you lose your house. And he now telling you that you cheating and you're not cheating. And he's stressing you out and you feel like he still do it. I'll let you go first. Well, when you encourage, when somebody does something to you the first time, and, it, and it's okay with you, then that's basically saying you're giving them the license to do it over and over and over again. Yes and no. I used to think that. Mm -hmm. I used to think that, um, that when, I, when, when you come to me and you say, you know, I realize that you do me something bad, whatever the bad is. Some bad I don't even tolerate, so I let that go. I don't even deal with that, not at all. But some bad I, 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 I let go and I say, I give John a little run, man. You know, for whatever mm -hmm. reason, I forgive John. And then John come and do maybe not the same bad, but one similar bad, and I forgive him again. Um, it, I don't believe that in all the cases, it is me training him how to treat me. I think that in some of the cases, it is me extending love and grace to him mm -hmm. with the hope with communication though with, no with, with the hope that he will not continue to make those choices mm -hmm. but if he continues to make those choices and i continue to extend grace then there is a problem because i know i'm putting myself in a bad place mm -hmm. so whatever it is that you have tolerated for 10 years so you tolerate it it is water under the bridge though the question you need to ask that is done the, need, the question in my mind that you need to ask yourself now is what are you going to continue what, to what, how, allow? Yes. How do I want to live my life? Is this the life that I want to continue for another 10 years? Mm -hmm. Do I want, you know, you see some, and I often see it with women more than men. You see some men, let's say he's 40 and you're 35. But when you're walking on the road, nobody knows you're 35 and he's 40, you know. Mm -hmm. They think he's 28 and you're 60. <laughs> Yeah. Seriously, yeah. because you so haggard, you mm -hmm. so stressed out, you mm -hmm. are so, you put right. yourself through so much stress You're that overwhelmed. you look old mm -hmm. and beat up, and he doing what he wants. Mm -hmm. So no, 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 no. When that start to happen, you draw back. You and set your boundaries. While marriage, a lot of people take marriage for to the T. I believe that if you are in a marriage and the other person has violated the contract, then the marriage is no longer a marriage. Mm -hmm. I, that is my firm belief, and you have to make decisions that will make your life and your children's life a better place. You don't want to teach your daughters that this is life. Mm -hmm. You don't want to teach your sons that this is mm -hmm. life. So the question I would ask myself is, why are you there still? Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I have to have to absolutely say this, that any marriage that does not has God, have God as its foundation is, and not that a per, a a person that has Christ or a Christian marriage is any better. You're going to take a licking. Your marriage is going to take a beating anyway. But to have God in the midst is a plus for you. And I believe that at some point there will be directions that God will give you. Um, because you talk about cheating and forgiveness and all of that. And that is true. But you want to be operating from a place God is in control of everything. He absolutely sees us, sees all and knows all. And so you can't, like, people have to deal with themselves personally, like what's going on inside of that person. So you're going to have to make God a part of your marriage because he's going to direct it which way it's supposed to go. And whatever changes need to be made, you're going to have to trust him to make those changes, some that you yourself can't make. 
So there are some boundary lines that you're going to be able to set, like naturally, no, I'm not going to tolerate this. But there are some things that only God himself can intervene on and make a difference for you. Couldn't agree with you more. Molly, winding down. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Anything you'd like to leave us with before you go? Well, I would just like to leave with the knowing that God loves each and every one of us. And what he wants for us is absolute peace. He doesn't want, his will is not for any of us to perish or live in turmoil. And if you have not given yourself to Christ, if you don't even understand what that means when I say, have you accepted Christ or have a relationship with Christ, then give us a call, come down by the bookstore and let us sit with you and explain to you what that means. But long story short, at the end of the day, this is the question. When you're dead, where you're going? Heaven or hell? You decide. And I know everybody got their own opinion about that and their own viewpoint. But from where I'm standing, those are your options. You decide. Heaven or hell? And if you choose heaven, then there's help for you. And I know I say I'm going, but um, there are some people that don't believe in heaven or hell. There are some people that believe in heaven, hell, and purgatory. There are some right. people that believe that this is your hell or your heaven that you live. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many options for right. a lot of people, and I respect your belief because I share similar beliefs. Um, but I think that what we need to do is be your best self at all time, every time, and we will get to the heaven that we so desire. I really think that if we continue to be our best selves, we say the best things that we can be, we be as kind as we can be, as loving as we can be, then we will get the best out of life. Well, good time. works cannot get you into heaven. The, and, and I will say this, there's one way to God. The Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Everybody else would want to sugarcoat it with their best, fantastic self. But you could take your best self and sit down somewhere and burn in hell. And I will say that. The Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Back to the Father. There's no other way. There's one way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ. Get into a relationship with him and let God prove himself to you. That it says so. On that note, we're going to wrap up. Guys, it's been fun. This is Run the Crichton Gentle along with... Danette Panton Fuller. Bye bye.